We'll move on with Dr. Jay Prakash from the University of Twente. We'll talk about uh, targeting macrophages in tumors and potential for anti-cancer therapy. Okay, uh, looking at the time, actually, I just changed the title of my presentation. I just made it a bit broader than tumor-associated macrophages, which was uh, originally in my presentation. But uh, if I look at the time, I have to really rush. Uh, I hope I can, uh, uh, with my speed of uh, speech, I can still uh, convince you with some things which we are doing. Um, let's say the focus is uh, to develop, uh, to really focus on the uh, tumor microenvironment. And I started here in the University of Twente two and a half years ago. And uh, let's say when you start as from the scratch, really from the scratch, then you have some new ideas and you try to do as good as possible. So the approach was to go from back to the bench side. We take the patient, uh, you know, biopsies. We identify the targets and we design uh, peptide or we select therapeutics and combine with the nanosystems in order to go for preclinical to clinical. It's a long approach, of course. In two years, uh, you just take the, uh, the child steps. Uh, so just coming back to you, have heard a lot about the tumor uh, microenvironment. So there are like around 15, 16 different type of cells uh, other than tumor cells. Um, if you really look at in this, they are like uh, inflammatory cells. There are about 10 different types of infl inflammatory cells itself. And they communicate uh, um, extensively among each other. So the whole environment educate um, all cells. First, the tumor cells, they educate you know, the other cells. And, uh, and after that, they all actually make the tumor environment permissive for their growth and metastasis. Um, what we do, we are just focused on these two cell types, cancer-associated fibroblast and tumor-associated macrophages. So I will just give examples of the two cell types, how we are targeting and how we are uh, designing the therapeutics against that. So first, we go for the uh, cancer-associated fibroblast. Cancer-associated fibroblasts are almost, uh, in all tumors, they are like uh, at different percentages are present. Let's say in, um, uh, in pancreatic cancer, they can occupy up to 80 to 90% of the whole tumor. And that's why I'm really focused on pancreatic cancer in, uh, in terms of uh, uh, targeting to uh, cancer-associated fibroblasts. So when you look at the, uh, the pathology, when you have a section uh, of a pancreatic cancer, what you see that there is an extensive stroma and uh, sometimes you just find, don't find the tumor cells, but only the stroma. And this is one of the questions in the field that from where the stroma is coming, uh, what is the origin of these fibroblasts? And so far the literature is saying that the, the, the major origin is from pancreatic uh, stellate cells, which are locally present. Originally they are like 5%, and with time they can grow up to like 90%. So our idea is to simply inhibit the activity of these pancreatic stellate cells, which uh, make the environment, they secrete the growth factors, and make the tumor cells uh, metastasizing, so they migrate to the other uh, sites. And we, uh, we chose for uh, microRNA because microRNAs are the key regulator of cellular processes. Um, in con uh, unlike uh, siRNA, they don't control one gene, but they can control up to hundreds of genes at the same time. And they can be very process dependent. So what we did in the collaboration of a group from uh, Sweden in Lynn Shopping, we isolated uh, pancreatic stellate cells, or I would say cancer-associated fibroblast, from the biopsies of the resected tumor uh, from pancreatic cancer. And we found that these two microRNA, 199A and 214, they were highly induced in these patients. One of the things you should take into account that there are only 20% of the tumors, which, pancreatic tumors, which can be resected. So this kind of material is very exceptional. You don't find these uh, uh, tumors, and you don't find these fibroblasts. So what we did uh, to start from, let's say, the pure biology, we uh, had the primary uh, stellate cells. These are not, the, uh, not coming from the patients, but from the healthy uh, volunteers. These are the, the, these are the cells which they look when they are in the quiescent state, in the natural state. When you activate with the, them with the TGF beta, they really get, uh, they, they become stressed, and they have the stress fiber, as you can see with the uh, alpha smooth muscle actin staining. Just to make a, a long story short, what we did, we just bought some commercial anti-microRNA um, antagomir, hairpin inhibitors. And when we transfect, the, transfect uh, these cells, you see that with TGF-beta, 
they get activated. This is gene expression for the same protein here, alpha smooth muscle actin. And when you transfect with this microRNA, they show the inhibition. So that the, these microRNAs can control the differentiation of these pancreatic stellar cells into um, uh, calf phenotype. And this is just one of the examples what you can mimic in in vitro situation that these pancreatic cell cells, if you take the condition medium from these cells, you put on the endothelial cells, what you see there is a highly high tube formation. So these are uh, not, these are the Hubex cells, which are not treated with TGF beta, but the, they are just added with the condition medium derived from these stellar cells. And this is uh, something which is quantified, the number of tubes. So these branches which are formed, they are counted one by one, and you see there's a, a significant uh, induction in the tube formation, and when you have the condition medium from stellar cells, which are treated with these microRNAs, you see a clear inhibition. So what we can say, that these uh, microRNAs are the key targets in pancreatic stellar cells. Of course, this is not the end. Then we go for the drug delivery system, or microRNA delivery system. So we designed uh, two cell penetrating peptides here, one the monomeric form and the dimeric form. It's a very simple strategy just to combine uh, anti, -oligo, um, anti microRNA oligonucleotide. They make nanocomplexes. And these nanocomplexes can be very stable if you um, incubate with serum, they are very stable. And what we found, just in one slide, I can just present this data. We took tumor cells, PANC1 pancreatic tumor cells, and PSCs. These are the nanocomplexes one, and these are two. So when you transfect them, or you just add into the cells, and you look for the facts, uh, what is the percentage of uptake, you see that nanocomplexes two, they have much higher up uptake uh, compared to nanocomplexes one. But this is another thing which we didn't expect, actually, that the pancreatic stellar cells had much higher uptake compared to the tumor cells. And we were just puzzled, what is the difference between these two cell types? And uh, this is something like what we found with, uh, after certain experiments, that uh, pancreatic stellar cells, they express a uh, very high amount of prote uh, proteoglycan. And syndicanes are one of the major proteoglycans which are present on the surface of uh, uh, these, uh, uh, these stellar cells or fibroblastic cells. And that makes the system much more specific towards, uh, to the pancreatic stellar cells. So our hypothesis is that these nanocomplexes, they bind to the syndicate, and they are endocytized, and further on they, uh, they release. And the mechanism of release inside is still under investigation. It's not that they are just taken up. We also took some active microRNA, and we found also the inhibition. So it's not up to the, that they are not just sitting in the endoso endosomes. They are released, and they are effective. So Jonas Schnitter, he has a poster, um, also, so he, if you are interested, you can just discuss further with him. Just coming fast to the, uh, speeding up a little bit more, to the tumor-associated macrophages, which was my original title. So here also we just took some biological approach. Uh, so the idea is simply just to find something which is specific um, for these macrophages. You can have the drug delivery system which is specific, but you can also have a drug which is specific to um, uh, tumor-associated macrophages. So they are, uh, in general, there are two subtypes of macrophages, M1 and M2. M2 also have actually three subtypes, M2, A, B, C. Uh, probably there are more to be investigated. But in general, let's say M1 are inflammatory. If there is inflammation, there's, there are a lot of infiltrated macrophages which have M1 phenotype. But in tumor, the tumor cells, the tumor um, uh, cells, they produce a lot of uh, growth factors which make them M2-like cells. There is, again, these are like uh, the cells which are also representing a lot of normal macrophages in, um, in, in different organs. So they have the protumoral uh, phenotype. They produce, cause angiogenesis, uh, metastasis also, and tumor promotion. It's one of the things uh, when we started, you know, from scratch, one question arrived in mind, okay, how to uh, find a drug which we need to target? So what we did, we just looked at the pathways. These, are the, uh, these cells are normally uh, transformed into M2 via these cytokines, IL-4 and IL-13. And these IL-4, IL-13s, they both actually act through STAT-6 pathway. And this is something what we confirmed when we uh, in vitro system with the mouse macrophages, when we 
transform them into M1 and M2, we find that M2 express high expression of uh, phosphorylated STAT6. And then we looked at the literature. We couldn't find actually much about the STAT6 and STAT6 inhibitors. We found a drug which was not available, so we went to the commercial company. We asked them to prepare uh, to synthesize for us, so we got a custom synthesized uh, this drug molecule. And this drug molecule will be tested in the same system, and we found that with a higher concentration, they actually inhibit the phosphorylation of this pathway. And not only the phosphorylation, but also they actually inhibit the M2 specifically, M2 phenotype, but not M1. Instead of uh, inhibiting, they were inducing M1, which is a very good, actually, thing because M1 are anti-tumor. So we have something which is specific for uh, M2 macrophages, and uh, this is a, a one of the assays, uh, again, with a condition medium. We took the condition medium from M2 macrophages, we put on the tumor cells, and what we see that the these tumor cells have the very high migration compared to the, if you take the uh, condition medium from the raw cells. And when you take the condition medium from the raw cells, uh, from the M2 macrophages, which are treated with this drug, then you see there is an inhibition. So we tested this compound. Of course, uh, the one thing is we can just put in the liposome or another nanoparticle and we start doing uh, delivery. But is there a need of delivery? That's the first question. So we just uh, tested like two doses. So uh, I'm just showing here 20 milligram per kilogram per day dose, and we saw a small inhibition of this uh, in the tumor growth uh, with this drug. Um, we did also some imaging with the, because this is uh, luciferase expressing tumor cells. We found uh, there was a clear inhibition in the, tumor, um, uh, in the tumor size, but also in the metastasis in these uh, tumors. So, of course, there is not like wonderful effect that uh, you have 100% inhibition, and then we went on, we thought, okay, let's start with something on delivery, and that happened like a, a month or two months ago. So we have these systems in our lab that we can prepare these kind of particles, and uh, the point is that we started just simply with the liposomes, uh, uh, that's as the first approach. And we made these liposomes with this compound, and we showed in vitro that we could have the FT, FT compound released and showing the effects. And that is up to we are, let's say. We are not, uh, we are going to test this because of the summer holidays, the experiments have been delayed, but we will test this formulation very soon in uh, animals. So, summary, I won't take so much time, but in general, we have uh, identified the microRNA target, we have the delivery system for TAM, we have STAT6 pathway as a novel pathway investigated, and we have the delivery system, and we are going to go further on. And this is my team, actually, at the moment. This is the, uh, the work I'm presenting from these three PhD students. And, uh, of course, there's much more to tell in uh, coming time. And this, uh, yeah, of course, this is like, uh, you know, the big approach uh, cannot be done without uh, all these collaborators. And Khert, uh, who is sitting uh, here and there and everywhere, uh, <laughs> is uh, keeping eye on that. So thank you very much uh, uh, for your attention. Thank you very much, Jay, for this really nice talk on uh, some of the fundamental mechanisms, signaling mechanisms in fibroblasts and macrophages. I'm sure there are one or two questions. No, if not, um, I can try to come up with a question. So if, if you think of delivery of these compounds specifically to fibroblasts, right? Yes. That would imply that you need a long circulating formulation with a nanoparticle, within a nanoparticle that is cationic, that then within a poorly perfused tumor like pancreas also extravasates, so it has to be a small particle. Do you think it's feasible? Because I, I have the impression that many of the RNA delivery systems tend to grow in size, in particular in vivo. They do not circulate very long. Mm -hmm. They really need, at the beginning, EPR to be able to reach their, their target cells. So these systems are like about 100 nanometer size, and uh, we, what we did, we actually added a small amount of albumin, and we tested like up to the stability up to uh, 24 hours, and they were quite stable in size. So they didn't grow, because they, uh, these are not positively charged anymore when you actually coat them with albumin. Mm -hmm. So they stay stable. But of course, uh, this is one of the challenges we, which we are going to see in the uh, coming time. Yeah. Now, one more question regarding the STOT6 inhibitor. So do you think the effect in that case that you see on tumors and metastasis is really macrophage specific? Or does it also have an intrinsic anti-cancer cell effect? Um, the uh, is broad, we tested right? actually uh, direct activity on the tumor cells and we didn't see any activity, any okay. uh, tumor cell inhibition, uh, growth inhibition. And 
in, in a preliminary experiment, in the pilot experiment which we did with the lower dose, we found there was a reduction in the total macrophage population in tumors. So, okay. So, the indication is there. Yes. Last chance for a question? <laughs> if not, we move on to the last talk. Thank Thanks. you.